Hello, welcome to Mzansi All Story. My name is Connie. Today, I just wanted to talk about quickly about the inflation situation between South Africa and Australia. Of course, um, both markets are different. Australia is very developed. South Africa is developing, but also the target range of inflation in South Africa is a bit wider. Australia is a bit narrow because more stable markets. Australia, South Africa is more volatile market because it's developing or of shock can actually affect South African uh, economy, external shock versus what Australia. So the CPR in South Africa is about between six, uh, between, sorry, between three and six, and Australia is between two and three. It's a very narrow range, okay? So the mid range for South Africa is about 4.5 CPR. So the Australia be about uh, 2.5 CPR, that's the mid range. Now, with Australia, we're not going to see any changes to CPI according to IMF until next year. And they predict that Australia's CPI will be around 3.6 late next year. So, more pain for us. However, South Africa is very lucky because their CPI is coming down. Yesterday's uh, uh, stats uh, indicated that the South African CPI is around 3.8%. So it's really way below the mid-range of what the Reserve Bank of South Africa would have loved to be. So they're comfortable in actually cutting the rates. This would be the second cut if they cut the rate, which markets already predict that the rate there'll be a rate cut anyway. Happy Christmas for you, South Africans. You're going to have uh, some money. And thanks to the stronger rents, stable country with a stable democracy gnu and that is as a result of that because there were no wars or no something like that no people trying to kill opposition and doing all the stuff that happening now in mozambique people accepted the outcome of elections and the anc form tried and form a government so they can govern and it's been so fantastic it provided the stability what it gnu provided is the stability and the trust that doesn't matter what outcome of the election will be, whoever wins, there will be a stability within the markets. So the stability is so important around investment in your country. If they feel that you are not stable country, your government is not doing right, you know, they're not really doing correctly in terms of democracy, then they're not going to spend money in it because their money is not going to be safe we can see even in some countries where there's a lot of instability then there's no investment because people don't feel that the money will be safe in those countries so for south africa the elections resulted in really stable uh, country and stable democracy with uh, more confident and therefore the rent has been strengthening and the inflation is coming down and that helps with the people who are unemployed and the prices and, and so on. And also for South Africa, because the unemployment is still high. And that's why we, the, we're expecting this inflation to come down even lower towards probably towards the three range. I expect the South African inflation will actually be low, become close to three or even below three uh, because of the situation around unemployment. Cost is so high. And for Australia, apparently, according to the economics, we need to see a higher unemployment. Uh, yeah, for us to have a little bit of a breather on inflation side, to see it come down so that we can have at least uh, a lower interest rate and have some money a little bit. But that is not expected until next year, which is really bad for us. But you know, it's how this government went about trying to tackle inflation everything they put in there was just inflationary you know all those subsidies just delaying the pain because they're going to be eventually remove the subsidy the subsidy is the subsidies that the government provided to all of us for energy and so that because the price of energy went really high you know australia is the country that produced gas is actually the gas equivalent of saudi arabia yeah, the powerhouse of gas. But he would say that if Australia produced so much gas, why are we paying so much prices in electricity and all of that? Because, you know, to generate electricity, you need a gas. Yes, you can ask that question, but, you know, we haven't actually had any 
guest reservation policy that allows some guests to be remain to remain in Australia for um, local use, and so we are competing with uh, international markets. So that's why we're seeing prices of gas, electricity, uh, energy higher in Australia compared to um, other markets anyway. So we have these subsidies and this subsidy will be wind down. So we're going to see a true inflation as a result of that. So the inflation is not expected to come down anytime soon. And next year in May, we're going to must have an election next year. So um, it's not good for another party because they've done a lot of things wrong this year for this party. But we're, not, we're going to see how it's going to play out. There's a lot of things they've done this um uh, this Labour government, this Labour government, I would say is the most incompetent Labour government I've seen since I've become an Australian citizen. <laughs> Normally, yeah, so there was, there's the, this one is the worst, actually. Uh, yeah, they've done a lot of things worse, 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 everything they've just done, uh, especially around housing and this higher migration. I would have hoped that they actually did uh, look at the impact of numbers of people coming in with the housing because we just came out of this long uh, restriction of pandemic and there was a lot of disruption around the building industry and also the prices stability was was not really predictable so you would think that they would have a really thorough thought about how they can go about doing that and and without actually putting upward, upward pressure on housing, especially renting, the price of renting. And, but they didn't look at that. They just went on, yeah, opening the tap and then, wow, well, voila, it was a lot of flats gate of high number of migrants that came in and we don't have enough houses to house them, see? And having people to struggle to find in rental properties, people were working to actually be homeless that's not australia that i know so you see how the uncontrolled number of migrants without looking at resources without matching it with the resources what that can do to the society this is what we saw with the in it's it hasn't gone down anyway we're seeing that it still continue the housing uh, run rental it's still continuing to be a problem for australia moving forward and I don't know how they can manage it. They're throwing a lot of stuff out there, but none of it will work because you still, um, the economy is still really, the wealth of Australian is still tied around property. There's no other industry in Australia other than the property investment. There's nothing for regular folks, okay, to make a lot of money from and to see the wealth. The wealth is tied on property. so. This must, the Ponzi of housing must continue because otherwise people are going to feel, you know, poor if the house prices drop. They must continue somehow, okay? So that is where we at in terms of the housing in Australia. What's another thing that I wanted to talk about for you people, international people who are not familiar with Australia? Yes, it's, uh, yeah, so talk about housing. Um, yeah, and also the employment. The unemployment is very low here. So it, for us to see any improvement, we need to see an increase in un unemployment. So you see an improvement in the CPR, inflation coming down, we need to see a rise in unemployment, which is really sad because the houses here are very expensive. Just imagine the people not having a job to pay for their mortgages. I don't wish that on anyone. The, uh, so, but... That is what economists are predicting. That we that need that needs to happen must happen for us to see a lower uh, interest rate, a lower CPR. Yeah, that's pain. So that means we're going to see a rise in unemployment, or we're going to stay where we are for longer. Higher interest rate for longer. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, no, 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 I don't wish that. So, uh, so another thing with this higher prices of the uh, rental uh, housing in Australia, uh, a few days ago they did release the data of um, number of beds, 
natural baths in Australia. There aren't many kids that are born in Australia. So an increase in population in Australia is through migration. It's not through natural birth. And mainly the, the states where this is really affected is the New South Wales. New South Wales is critical there because the price is very expensive there. It's very expensive to live in New South Wales. Um, and it'll be so expensive to even you can't, the house price is so high, higher than Adelaide, massive. Uh, so people to have a family, have kids, you need to think about buying the house first. If the house prices are so expensive that your partner, male or female, you need to have a, you need to be working, you need to be working full time and to be able to afford a mortgage, to buy the house and pay for mortgage. Imagine, do you think those couple are going to have kids? Because once one has the kids, you need to stay at home, look after, or reduce your hours. So how are you going to pay for a mortgage if you are both going to be, one person needs to be out of workforce and return back part-time? You see how that plays out in that birth rate, uh, drop in birth rate or people not wanting to have kids or don't have, the economy is not as, as, healthy for them to feel empowered to have kids this is what we're seeing in australia is that uh, drop in uh, birth rate uh, natural birth rate in australia mostly critical in, in states where things are very expensive like new south wales where it's very expensive to buy how to rent and nobody wants to re re have kids and raise them in a tent city have more kids and they don't have a house. They have to go and hunt for houses to rent the house somewhere and be homeless. No parents want that. So first couple wants to buy a house and they settle. And once the kids are in one, the parent, one parents will stay at home and, and look after the kids and the other one work. Or they either work part-time both, but they share the responsibility. So if you can't do that because the mortgage is higher. You see why people would delay having kids and that's why the birth rate is so low in Australia. So yes, that all of that is interconnected, very much connected. I don't know what they're gonna do about it because that's a big problem for Australia moving forward is the housing. Everything is linked and connected to housing. People need to feel empowered if they wanna have kids to have kids and be supported through the economy in making sure that they can still work and contribute and look after the kids if that working for them is a choice it's no longer a, they must do it otherwise they'll be homeless and um, so we're seeing that here and um, so i think for south africa that's not happening because of this higher number of illegal migrants and um, the middle class families they all, always will have some some form of a help at home, so it would be cheaper. It's cheaper for them to have help, and that's why people, political party, are fighting to have these illegal migrants there because it's benefiting them in that way. But it's not benefiting the entire South Africans. People, the subgroup of South Africans, are not benefiting from this, and that's another thing that you need to look at when you look at these things. There are always people who are benefiting. They're always victims that are actually suffering. In South Africa, these illegal migrants, they're really very much um, uh, suffering in terms of employment and also it actually, the, the rich, those one who lives in these pop wire type homes, like uh, prism type homes, where there's security everywhere, they're the one that are benefiting from this higher number of illegal migrants. Um, so you need to look at that in that way. Hopefully I've given you a, a really good understanding what's going on in South Africa. Thank you guys. Have a lovely night. Bye for now.